Bruce Lawn. When we're talking about your generation, and you're 20 years old, you graduated Bible college already, uh, your generation, when we're talking about this, this, this interface of TikTok, YouTube content, is the most marketed to generation ever. I mean, you guys are always getting bombarded. And I didn't really factor this in until my brother Amen Alex kind of broke it down to me where he was like, listen, there this generation is not looking for the gloss, the floss, the the shine. They just want something authentic. They want something real. real. And, yeah, right. And and you said you did it on your phone, right? You had an old phone. You finally like, okay, I'm gonna upgrade. There's this thing about TikTok where if it's too polished, it almost won't work. Mm -hmm. Like they want more of the approachable, less produced stuff. And it, and it made me think about, I was listening to this interview also with Mr. Beast and they were talking about how he shoots these elaborate videos that cost millions. He's been spending a million dollars on a video. And he says they intentionally shoot them on janky cameras because they want it to look more approachable. Can you talk about that in terms of just as someone as Gen Z, you're younger than me. I'm 36. You're 20 years old. Can you just help us understand how your generation views things a bit different? That you guys don't need the glitz, the glam, the mega church, the flashy lights, the production, or the over the top. I mean, it's literally you on your phone, and you're crushing it on TikTok, and you're crushing it on YouTube. If you were to ask me where I want to be in five or ten years, I would actually still want to be making everything with my two phones. I have one iPhone SE, and then I have iPhone 10 that I do everything with. And the main like reason behind that is we want to see stuff that we could make ourselves. So when wow. I'm making a video, hold on, my hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You got, you got to back, you got to back that up. <laughs> you got to back that up because that was a gem right there. You said we want to see stuff that we, we can make see ourselves. That you can make yourself. It, it has to be something you can do on your own. Wow. It, it has to be because it, you want to know something really crazy. And here's what most people don't understand about media. It's all about a personal connection. And TV, po super polished, edited up stuff is so distant in our world. We are actually, FaceTime is a huge thing for us because it's just, it's the camera opening up. It's actually like me being able to talk face to face with someone without mm. any gloss or polish. So TikTok is actually like the closest you can yeah. maybe get to a, a uh, internet interaction that you feel like is real. Wow. That's and, deep, dude. That's, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that, that's so insightful and so deep because my generation probably has more of that. Like I want to be artsy fartsy and creative and, and, you know, make stuff really cool. The Casey Neistat generation, right? Like yeah. the vlog, we're going to make stuff look super sick, shoot films. Mm -hmm. And you guys are like, Dude, just give me the freaking phone. Let's just go. You know, that's 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 really insightful. And so let's let's unpack that a little bit. To, to tell me more, like, why do you think that is? Why is it that they because they also aspire to be content creators, low key? Why do you think it is that they want to they want to see something that they can create? Oh yeah, actually, the number one job um, that Gen Z wants, I think it's like some like fifty five percent of Gen Z surveyed wants to be content creators. Um, yeah. So they want they want to see who they aspire to be. Um, and and that is why actually they'll connect more to digital Christian creators than a, they'll yeah. ever connect to a pastor. Mm. Because when they see a pastor, they're they're they know they're not going to be a pastor, most likely. Right. Mm -hmm. Ninety five mm -hmm. percent of people. But when they see someone who just takes out their phone talking about God, they're like, wow, that sounds like a person I could actually talk to God about. That sounds like wow. somebody I could just connect to. Wow, that's good. So my question to you is, you've been able to take some of this. First of all, kudos to you for being able to take your TikTok audience, some of your TikTok audience, and pivot to YouTube. Obviously, because YouTube's easier to monetize, and, and, and there's some sustainability there from a career standpoint, right? Um, so not every TikToker can do that. So that shows that you have some depth. And to, and you have, a, I mean, a 10% conversion. That's actually really good. You have 1.6 million, 160,000 subscribers. Those analytics are, are sharp. And I'm not saying everybody on your YouTube is from your TikTok or whatever not to not to do it like that but what i think is also interesting is that you on your tiktok pull people from tiktok to in-person 
gatherings. I see you constantly oh, yeah. promoting stuff in the DFW area. Uh, there was this really cool TikTok where you're like, guys, I'm in Dallas and I found this abandoned, uh, what was it? Like an uh, abandoned oh, a tunnel. Um, yeah, it was a tunnel. Abandoned tunnel. You don't want to go there, but you want to be here tonight. <laughs> and you're like, promo- so tell me that. So tell me that. So when you're doing stuff in person, how is the conversion there? Like, are you are you guys drawing crowds to these Bible yeah. studies? Is it connected to a local church? Because that's my yeah. next question is, how can the local church help facilitate the next generation of creators like you? But before we get into that, t- tell me about like pulling people from TikTok, from YouTube into real life gatherings. I think that's so dope, man, because it's so easy to just like kick your feet up as a creator and be like, ha, I made my gospel <laughs> Jesus content quota for the day and I'm out, right? But you're like, no, no, we're going to get together. We're going to study the Bible. How has that been like pulling people from the internet into real life? Yeah, well, so to give you an example, um, you brought up the DFW event. I preached at a church on May 19th, so two weeks ago. And um, they're uh, just like a local church, small church, actually. And I preached there about four months ago when I didn't really have a bunch of time to promote it. They only gave me like a day's notice or something like that. And they ha- we ha- I think we had about like 20, 20 kids, maybe. And mm-hmm. so this time I had like a whole week, which to, m- to most people, you're like, you only had a week. But to me, a week is perfect, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know anything about promoting things. But if you promote something like two outside of something, especially yep. for like something easy people can get to, they're going to forget about it. But Mm -hmm. so I was given a week and I promoted it. And I kid you not, I think we had like 40 to 50 kids come up. Um, Like sixth grader came with his mom and he was telling me, he's like, I I saw you on TikTok and my mom wasn't going to let me go, but because it's a church, she brought me Mm -hmm. here. And like, it was really cool. It was really cool. I would say even my, even the local church that I attend, actually people Mm -hmm. are hit me up and like, Hey, what church do you go to? I'm coming with you. And I've even seen um, like seven or eight people come to like even my local church that I'm not even preaching at um, wow. just from the app. So obviously like compared to 1.7 million people, it hasn't been like a 10% <laughs> conversion rate, like right sure. you now. But sure. it, I, I have seen real numbers on the ground because of it. Are, how is your local church that you're a member of supporting or partnering or shepherding this platform you have? You have, I mean, Bro, you have more reach than your local church. You have more reach than most local senior pastors, let alone youth pastors. What is the what is what is that dynamic like being in this ecosystem of right a local church, but also having this massive influence online? Yeah, to be completely candid with you, I love how my local church understands their purpose, which is to be the local church. Mm -hmm. And in the body of Christ, we're all called to different things and purposes. And it's on both sides of the sword because it's not just my church, but I would say it's 95% of the churches in America. If you were to tell them about the opportunity to reach young people, if they're being honest, they'll tell you this. They'll say, that's great. That's lovely. We care about that, but we need to attend to our local community. And when I first heard that from churches, I was it, it, it made me be like, are you kidding me? You, you should guys should want to invest in this and pour into this right. and, yeah. and do all this. Right. But I, I learned, and this was, this was the wisdom that, that I'm thankful that God gave me. He said, Gabe, that's not necessarily all of their purpose. Their purpose mm. is what I've called them to. Mm. And God spoke to me. He said, I've called you to evangelize and to do mm. what you're doing. Mm. And so I, I, that clicked in my mind. And I said, Oh, I get it now. So then I started thinking, how can I help local churches get people in their community to go to their church? So, um, as far as like the partnership with my local church, I have pastors that I submit to, mm-hmm. um, multiple, not mm-hmm. just one or two, um, text, the text videos that I've made, um, talk to them about it, ask them questions, um, and those such things. And then just anybody that is like around, I, I tell them about the church, but it's, it's two different purposes, I would say. And, and we know each other's callings and we kind of stick to it. So, yeah, man. I mean, in, in my case, I, I was early on doing a ministry in I was 17 going to a big mega church and we started a ministry called the vessel of hip hop and we were leveraging music uh we had we would have a dj we would have a freestyle session this is like eight mile time it was probably way before your age but it was like even <laughs> eminem came out eight mile and so he would do like this entire gathering and we were getting like 80 kids uh, every Thursday night, I was working at Pizza Hut at the time, so I was able to get like free free pizza, jam pack the room out, and it was super dope, man. And when the local church, unfortunately, this local church found out, uh, they were just kind of like, "Yeah, this isn't really our vision. Like, this isn't who our church is trying to reach." And I didn't quite understand until I got older, man, that a lot of this is 
the demographic of eighth to 12th grade isn't a huge demo for churches because they don't, um, they're not, they're not going to give a ton of money. Like it doesn't make sense on a, on a spreadsheet to invest <laughs> that a ton buzzer. of money. Right. That that <laughs> so, so, so it's like, dude, they, they, they see this entire emerging <laughs> opportunity with TikTok, with YouTube, with, um, with all these different ways to, to reach young people. But does it make sense to pour resource into this because say we got a ministry, say Gabe goes super duper hard and Gabe is like pushing DFW. Everybody feel like you can look at the analytics and let's just say there's, I don't know, 10,000 people in DFW that follow you on TikTok, And let's just say 500 of those, a thousand of those people start showing up to your local youth group. Right. And, or you guys start a service or whatever that's going to cost them more then it's going to generate in revenue, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be facetious or trying to be mean and say that all churches are like that. That's not my heart. Right. Um, but it doesn't always make sense on paper when you look at how you could evangelize, how you can reach. And we were just, we were doing open mics, we were doing concerts, we were throwing events, and we would always pull a great crowd. But it, 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 it can feel more like a drain on um on the church than an actual blessing to the church and like you said the church is there and it has a function and a role so i always kind of had this tension between like the arts and media which tends to be naturally more evangelistic like if you're a creative person if you like media if you like music if you like culture you're naturally going to be more evangelistic and tell people about jesus right you, it, that person is less likely to be and this is no disrespect to anybody but that person is less likely to be like a theology nerd right that's just like always in the in, in, the, in the scriptures on theology oh, and reading goodness. systematic theology that person is going to be more likely to like have a have a, a desire to reach people far from god but it's it's an interesting intersection on how to connect that and how to empower young people to pull people into local churches because that's ultimately what we want we want people in local churches so they could get discipled Agreed. shepherded ta taught up in ministry um so that's dude that's so cool to hear that your church is supportive that your church is covering you that your church is, is holding you accountable mainstream entertainment bruce lawn Hey, thank you so much for making it till the end of this video. If you found it valuable, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. Also, you can check out one of the other videos related to this that'll be over here or check out more of my story. Now, I gotta tell you about a free training I have for anyone that is an entrepreneur, a creative, an artist, or just generally looking to get into the YouTube space, but maybe you are unsure on how to find your voice, how to find your niche, and how to create predictable success. I have a free training, find your YouTube niche training in the description of this video. Check it out. I promise you, you will find it valuable. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I will see you on the next video.